Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room, and welcome to day number four of the Dart Zone Review-a-thon. Happy Thursday, everybody, and in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Dart Zone Jurassic Pro. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everyone forgot about this one immediately after it came out. Y'all probably don't even remember this one, but I do. Oh, I remember it all too well. And today I'm going to be trying to touch on why this thing immediately disappeared off the face of the earth right after it came out. Nobody ever wanted to talk about it. So let's get started. <music> So, the Jurassic Pro was a 2022 release out of Dart Zone in the Adventure Force Pro series, which, like the Nexus and Aeon Pro, were Walmart exclusives that shot 150 odd. This blaster was actually trying to be a form of, like, Nerf Limited style recreational movie prop, this one being the tranquilizer gun from Jurassic World. Hence the name Jurassic Pro, and hence the extraordinarily interesting looking design and shell concept that we've got going here. There's uh, quite a lot to talk about, but first of all, we got to start with the design. And yes, it looks really cool. It's very similar to what you would expect out of something like this, like the, the tranquilizer thing from Jurassic World. And I think that this blaster does the design enough justice. I can't really recall exactly what the prop looked like in the original film, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, it's a big-ass sniper rifle blaster that is so big that I can use it as a walking stick, and it has lots of details. My favorite part about the whole blaster is the removable stock. It's painted clear all over it, and it's got these black pieces of plastic that integrate in and out of the shell, similarly to something like the Maxim Pro. And it also has this, like, paper mache plastic like mosquito thing on the inside to give the illusion of it being actually stuck in the stock and it being full of amber which is a pretty cool concept and all in all and i think that it looks really cool on this blaster the rest of the blaster on the other hand I, I don't really share the same opinion. I think that the grip looks really cool, but once you get past, like, right here, this whole section is completely flat. It is entirely flat, and I have no idea why they have all this printing here. There is no reason for there to be that much printing of something that, like, it looks like it's on fire. It looks like lava. I think it is supposed to be lava. There's, like, these bright whites and bright yellows, but it's so hard to tell because, like, what is going on here? And then there's obviously the Jurassic World Dominion logo in the middle. If it had just been the Jurassic World Dominion logo with, like, more details like this printed on all over the place, just, like, these sort of mechanical-looking stripes and, like, lines and stuff, that would have looked way cooler. But they have this awkward, like, overly complex lava printing on the side, which definitely gives it a vibe, but the thing is, it's not really a good one. And the only other part that I really like is the front muzzle head thing right here, which is supposed to be like that double-edged taser thing so that you can melee people effectively, except they didn't make this out of foam. They made it out of plastic, which completely defeats the only cool thing that this could have been able to do. And my biggest frustration when this thing came out was the fact that there was no version of this that was made out of foam because this can come right off and it's made of plastic and it's not made out of foam. Why couldn't it have been made out of foam? Why, Dart Zone? Why couldn't you make this out of foam? I wanted to melee people by stabbing them with it. Cause that's so cool, that's what they do in the movie. I wanna stab people with my tactical taser fork thing. But with all that said, let's move on to the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip, no real foregrip, but it does have a stock, a cheek wrist, and a bolt handle, which is how the blaster primes. The main grip of this blaster is kind of underrated. I think that it's a pretty good main grip. I do think it's a little bit too flat on the front and on the back, but all in all, it's not bad. I don't mind using this grip for an extended period of time. And the only part of the grip that I thought got mildly uncomfortable was right here since it's flat rather than there being a dovetail so it's just kind of a jarring edge on the webbing of your hand that becomes noticeable over time as you use the blaster more the foregrip existence would be like right here and putting your hand up here is pretty comfortable all in all i don't really have any complaints besides this awkward rail that they have there for literally no reason there's no attachments that you can fit there because of how small the rail is there's no foregrips or anything then the rail just acts as a rough point that your hand crashes into it doesn't really look cool because of how small and hidden it is just makes me wonder why they put it there and as for the stock and the cheek rest hot take this stock absolutely sucks in more ways than one 
First of all, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, the stock is very unstable. When you prime the blaster, it tends to creak and bends to the side, which makes the whole point of a stock like this completely useless because you can't use the stock as a stock. But that's not the biggest problem I have with it. The problem is that it's really, really painful. You see, you have this big flat section of plastic here and a flat section of plastic up there with another flat part right there, but this doesn't really matter. It's mainly just this curve right here. It goes into your shoulder in a very weird way to where this top part right here will push really hard against your actual collarbone up here. So when you prime it off your shoulder, it applies significant pressure in a spot that really shouldn't have any pressure being put on it whatsoever. And within like 10 to 15 shots of using this, it becomes genuinely painful to shoulder and use to the point where I actually started doing this to prime the blaster because it was far more comfortable than trying to prime it while shouldering it, which really, really sucks. And the cheek rest is a cheek rest. It's actually pretty comfortable to put your cheek up here on top of this stock and somehow more stable than using the stock as a stock. But before I get on to the functionality, I really quickly want to address the iron sight and the scope thing that it has here. See, it has this big, like, this big orange plastic back iron sight and it's got this little tiny front iron sight right here, which doesn't look like it should do anything, but it actually does. The ring here and the little like rear iron sight, if you put it onto the rail like this, this and you look through it, the tiny ring back here will perfectly line up with the circular reticle built right into the middle of the front iron sight. And it creates a very, very accurate way to aim. And you can actually shoot very, very accurately on this thing. The irony here is killing me. The irony is driving me nuts, but I will get back to you on that in just a second. Let's talk about the functionality. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a magazine-fed bolt-action springer. So you've got a safety on the side, you can just push it in, and then you have the trigger activated. You pull the bolt back, you take your magazine, you put it in, you push the bolt forwards, and then you can fire once. And the blaster doesn't have slam fire. Let's talk about the trigger and the smoothness of operation. First of all, the bolt handle. It's literally just an Aeon Pro mechanism. I'm pretty sure the mech that's in this blaster is exactly the same as what an Aeon Pro has, so... I don't know, the prime absolutely sucks. There's a big dead zone for absolutely no reason. But once you actually hit here, it's not actually that bad. It's just really, really heavy. And pushing the bolt forwards is pretty gritty. It could definitely be a lot smoother. The trigger pull is pretty good. It doesn't have much pull and then it's got a pretty satisfying pop when you actually pull it. So no real complaints there. And as I mentioned earlier, the back of the stock just kind of like pushes to the right when you actually prime it. There's no way to avoid it. It's just a fiddly monstrosity. And unfortunately, because of this blaster's lack of a skinny pusher, there is no way to really take the mag out without priming the blaster. And unfortunately, because of how far forwards the mag release is, there's no way to do that anyway. Taking the mag out and putting the mag in is pretty smooth. It's got a pretty good mag well, and the mag release is the paddle style mag release that you should be used to with Dart Zone Pro blasters like this. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but I absolutely love the way this purple Maxim Pro magazine looks in this plaster. Is it just me? I don't know. All right, so what is the big hilarious irony with this blaster? Because I swear to God, this blaster is so ironic, it makes me almost pass out every time I think about it. Well, this is a sniper style blaster. This is something that is bolt action, mag fed, it's humongous, you'd sit behind cover and you would take precision shots through the super precise scope. You have this big precise barrel here. You can twist it and you can remove the barrel. There's no scar muzzle. There's no scar muzzle in there either. And there's no way to put a scar muzzle in here. You can try this till the cows come home, but there is no way that that scar muzzle is gonna fit in there by any stretch of the imagination. This blaster, which is specifically engineered and like the, the whole concept of it is being accurate and being precise, is the only Dark Zone Pro Springer that has ever come out that does not allow you to put a scar muzzle on it without modifying the shell. What? It's so simple. Like, seriously, if they had just allowed you to do that, just made the barrel a little teeny tiny, like one or two millimeters bigger, fit a scar muzzle in there, or fit a B-car onto it, 
then you could be actually accurate with this blaster, and there might actually be some form of usage for it. But nope, it is completely inaccurate. It shoots wherever it wants to, it does not go where you're aiming at all. It'll shoot to the left, it'll shoot to the right, it'll shoot up, it'll shoot down, darts will fishtail out of control, darts will come out backwards, darts will come out sideways, darts will just spiral and fall to the ground immediately, some darts will just sail off into non-existence. There's no rhyme or reason because you can't put any form of peripheral on this blaster to regulate where the darts are going. Even something like the Dart Zone Pro 1.2 over here, which has a scar muzzle adapter on it, did better because you could put a scar muzzle on it. It was not an accurate scar muzzle adapter. You couldn't really count on it because it's Wibbly Wobbly Wilson put it on there. But still, that's better than not being able to put one on in the first place on your sniper class blaster. Let's see if this thing fires so I can talk about mod potential and get out of here. Of course it falls. Because why wouldn't it? Full length first. Uh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> I'm aiming perfectly straight. It, did it jam? It did. That is horrific. It's completely jammed. Oh my god. The, the, the dirt is stuck in sideways. Now my ramrod's gone, I'm pretty sure. This is the best day ever, isn't it? We're just off to a great start today. Come on. Oh my god. Oh. My. God. Oh. My. God. Holy. Crap. Oh my God. There. Please let us finish this. What the heck was that? I don't even know. There. 18. Wow. You know what? No, I'm, I'm saving this for the short darts. That was horrifying. One. Let's see if I can knock this stupid cup tower down properly. Nope, I can't aim. There we go. What mod potential does the Dart Zone Pro, Pro, whatever you want to call it, Jurassic World Nugget thing have? I mean, it's basically an Aeon Pro, but it looks like this, and without a scar muzzle adapter, and with this giant foam barrel that causes darts to fishtail almost every single time you fire it. So I don't know, if you want to do Aeon Pro mods to this, you can, but at that point you may as well just buy an Aeon Pro or even just buy an Aeon Pro X and forget about this altogether, because really, this is a $50 blaster that is a worse version of a $25 blaster, and the only thing it's got going for it is the looks. Dart Zone literally pulled a Nerf Limited that, ironically enough, is no more usable than a Nerf Limited blaster because the most important peripheral is missing. Yeah, I don't really know what to say about that other than that's amazingly bad. That's fantasta bad. That's a new word I just invented to describe that type of instance. But what do I think of this blaster? What do you think? Yeah, this thing sucks. And it really sucks that it sucks because I would really like to say that this is a cool Dart Zone sniper and that it sucks that they didn't do this again. 
And again, I, st I do stand by that. I really wish they had done something like this again, because I feel like a sniper that Dart Zone makes that had like some form of nice bolt action could actually be pretty useful. But that's not what they gave us. They gave us an Aeon Pro with a glorified paint job and shell design on it that does nothing new, and ironically enough, does everything the Dart Zone Aeon Pro was trying to do worse than the original Aeon Pro. Imagine that. That's incredibly depressing, and I don't recommend anybody pick one of these up at all. If these are still available, though, I will link one in the description below, but I don't recommend anybody take a look at this blaster at all unless you're a massive, massive Jurassic World fan and you really like this design and you want to put it up on a shelf or you want to paint it to look like the actual tranquilizer gun thing. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye.